And thanks for joining us for what I hope will be an interesting discussion around some of the latest data in rheumatology. My name is Professor Peter Nash from the Griffith University in beautiful downtown Brisbane. And today we're very fortunate to be joined by Dr. Jürgen Reck, who is a senior physician at the Department of Internal Medicine, Rheumatology and Immunology at the Friedrich Alexander University of Erlangen, Nuremberg. It's a pleasure to have you join us today, Jürgen, to discuss a very interesting and important paper that you've recently published, which looks at the property of abatacept inhibiting inflammation and the onset of rheumatoid arthritis in individuals at very high risk, the ARIAA study. It's randomized international multicenter double blind and placebo controlled. Now, we've just talked about the APIPRA study. So we're going to ask Jürgen to explain a little bit about this particular study and how it's different and how he went about doing this study. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you work and okay. what your interests are, Jürgen. Um, hi, Peter. Thank you very much for inviting me and giving this talk about our study, which uh, we are quite happy that we were able to publish that right now. Um, I'm working at the clinic, University Clinic in Erlangen. Um, head of the department is Georg Schett. Um, and I was responsible for about 10 years for the clinical trial unit there. So it was my pleasure and I was happy enough to um, write the protocol with Georg. And we started that um, nearly 10 years ago. So uh, it took a while since then we started and now we finalized that and we're happy that we were able to publish that in Lancet. Um, it was a hard time at the beginning because at that time we were aware that there are patients at risk, but we were not aware how we can uh, see them and invite them for this study. So it took a while uh, to establish that. and. Yeah, but with Would, time. Did COVID interfere in the middle, Jürgen? No, it was not. It was not done done before. before. We have all patients included and all patients were treated so far. So COVID was no problem for us. All right. So we, you're looking at a study to prevent development in very high risk. So tell us a little bit about how you planned it. What were your methods to try and look at this particular question? A better set versus placebo in this particular group of patients. Um, when we started to look about such patients who were uh, at risk for developing RA, we also established at that time our um, HRPQCT, where we can look into the bone directly, where we can look on early destruction, erosions, and so on. And what we have seen is even with the antibodies, which could be measured, the ACBAS, the patients with the ACBAS do have um, um, thinning of the cortical situation in the bone. We have seen erosions at that time. And that was pretty interesting because that differs from this, um, the things what we have known so far. We then put uh, those patients, um, or we investigated them with MRI. And what we also have seen then is that they do have um, synovitis or tenosynovitis at that time point, even or although they do not suffer from any pain, which was quite interesting. So we have seen inflammation there. We have seen that they are ACPA positive. So in our opinion, this might reflect uh, patients who were really in risk for developing RA. And we followed these patients. And um, what was interesting is that in between one year, 70% of those patients who have erosions seen in the micro CT and inflammation and being ACPA positive develop RA. So this was then for us the situation that we thought that this could be um, the time point where we can change 
for instance, the development by using a drug. Okay, so, so, so you had 14 hospitals across Europe, Germany, Spain, the Czech Republic. Yeah. You picked people who had a positive ACPA. Yes. And they had to have evidence of subclinical synovitis or tenosynovitis or osteitis yes. using MRI and the OMARAC RAMRA score. Yes. The, the critics will say, didn't they already have RA then if they've got synovitis? Not by the def definition, by the ACR ULA criteria so far. We right. know that, our, we are, but we also know that some patients with synovitis will not develop RA, so they will improve or reduce the inflammation by themselves. So it was not okay. clear that all of them will develop. But they definitely had no joint swelling that you could detect, and you excluded anybody who had any disease-modifying drug or steroids Absolutely. and all the usual other exclusions. Yes. So how did you set the six-month study up? What did, what did you do to these people? So... Aqua positive, positive MRI, no swelling, very, very early. Um, and what did you do to them? Um, but they also, they did have um, unspecific adralgia. So they had symptoms. They had symptoms because th this put them uh, for an appointment uh, to, the radio, uh, to the rheumatologist. Okay, and that was important. Good. It would it uh, it was necessary necessary that it lasts more than six weeks or twelve weeks, so that it was clear that there is something ongoing on those patients. Mm. And this was the same group as we have seen before, who have by chance uh, the development of RA by seventy percent. So this must be the right population in our eyes. Do we get a lot of viral arthritis that you guys don't get, but they're always seronegative usually. Yes. Was there an ACPA cutoff? Do they have to have a certain amount of ACPA or any positive would do? Any positivity will do. Um, at that time, it was not clear if the if a high ACPA positivity reflects more likely the risk or a low is enough for that. Um, okay, this changed over time right now. So we know that they are more in, at risk if the uh, levels are quite high. Okay. And you picked six months treatment and then stopped and yeah. followed them for out to 12 months or longer? Uh, we followed them after stopping the medication for 12 months. 12 months. And I was curious as to why six months was chosen. Was that from previous data or fairly um, just you decided that if they're going to come good, that you would have blocked it in six months? Um, yeah, that, that was what our thinking. It was not quite clear how long we should treat. It was clear that not all patients in that state uh, of their disease want to have a lifelong uh, treatment, for sure, because they do not fulfill the criteria. And it was also, not, it was also clear that the ethic committee will not be convinced by using a drug which is labeled for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but not for pre-RA for a longer time. So we decided to go just for six months. That should be enough for uh, the mode of action we want to use um, to be successful. And uh, looking on the data of the MRIs we have seen before uh, means to us that there's, there is inflammation, but not that much. So we will see any change in between the six months, which doesn't mean that this is the ideal uh, treatment schedule for further um, studies. Studies, yeah. And your outcome's primary endpoint was change in that synovitis, tenosynovitis or osteitis on MRI, yeah. which is an interesting primary endpoint for this study. But the improvement was only by a point Yes. Is that a clinically significant difference to show that synovitis or tenosynovitis improves by one point on MRI? Are, are the patients going to notice that change? Um, they notice if there is a change in pain, for instance. Right. But it's not clear 
if or how much of information reflects the amount of pain uh, by the patient. So there is no clear definition if an improvement of one point is less good than two points, for instance. Uh, it, it was not recommended by the Omerect people, nor by ACR Euler. And at that time, 10 years ago, um, it's true that MRI was not um, accepted for being the um, primary endpoint, but it is now accepted by, or it's by definition for research agenda by Euler and ACR that we should look on that. And we have done that 10 years before. Okay, and your secondary endpoint was the onset of RA. Does that mean the onset of meeting the APLA ACA ULA criteria yes. with frank joint swelling? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And many dropouts. Did you have good retention through the study and, and both sides of the, of the two arms of the trial? Um, yes, of course. There were more dropouts in the placebo group, sure, because more mm -hmm. patients develop RA, so they need to be treated as an RA patient. But there are some patients who didn't want to stay um, on drug or placebo. They don't know that at the time point uh, because nothing happened to them. So well, only a few decided to go out of the trial. So what, what was the baseline characteristics of these people? They were as far as sex and smoking and weight and family history, how, how did these patients stack up? Um, there are more male patients in the abatacept groups than in the placebo group, more smokers in the abatacept group than in the placebo group. Um, and the other things are quite balanced in both groups. And I was interested that quite a lot of them 30 to 40% had a first degree relative with rheumatoid. So that's quite an interesting observation in this yeah. very early yeah. cohort. They had lots of ACPA, um, rheumatoid factor positive, inflammatory markers mildly elevated or not elevated at all. And the mean symptoms are about seven to eight months. So they're really quite early patients. Yeah. So tell us about your results. What did you find? Um, we found here that uh, in the abatacept group, only four patients developed uh, during the treatment phase RA, while 17 patients in the placebo group did that. So this was quite wow. significant uh, in those patients. And when we're looking on the baseline situation on MRI, most of the, the patients uh, do have tenosynovitis, less synovitis, and nearly no osteitis at that time point. So it doesn't start right. directly in the joint, but on as a tenosynovitis. And that have, we have seen also before uh, in the earlier cohort we collected. Um, Very interesting, yeah. you know, the PSA people talk about enthesitis before yeah. synovitis. Yeah. You're, you're teaching us tenosynovitis before yeah. synovitis. Yeah, Very that's... interesting. So what about the secondary endpoints? How did they go? Um, when we stopped the drug after six months and followed them for 12 months, it was clear that some of the abatacept patients also did develop RA in between these 12 months. But still, after 18 months, it was significant different from the placebo group. So in our opinion, we were yeah. able to delay the disease onset with abatacept. Uh, I don't think it's good to talk about prevention life for lifelong, um, but it looks uh, pretty interesting that we were able for just a short time period of treatment that we could delay the onset of the disease. Yeah, very interesting. And when you broke up some of those secondary measures like hack and DAS and yeah. joint swelling, was there any lessons to learn from those? Did they improve with yes. the abatacept treatment <laughs> compared to placebo? Yes, also on the life quality, uh, the patients improved with abatacept. In the hack score, uh, also in the rate score, 
Uh, and this lasted also for the observation time. It was also still significant over the 12 month period. So this was uh, pretty interesting in our thinking that this was able that the patient di directly um, can measure by himself that he improves and that he will stay in, uh, on this trial. Um, and this, after calculating um, the p values on that, um, it was really, we were really astonished that this also can be seen in the life quality assessments um, because it's quite subjective norm normally, but it was absolutely comparable to the results with the MRI um, and the other things we did. So interesting, swollen joints significantly better, but not tender joints, which is yeah. one of those um, things that make difficulty to get some of the outcomes that we use. Um, pain was significantly better. Um, Physician Global, um, HACK, yeah. SF36, PCS, so a number of the measures at six months. And those patients that then eventually lost the benefit do you think if you'd treated longer, it would have made any difference or you can't say without actually doing the study? Um, I don't think that we can say that. Okay, we can compare that to the Apipra study because they treat the patients for 12 months, um, but they get the same, nearly the same results as we have. So um, in my opinion, a longer treatment doesn't really mean that we will have better results in those patients. Um, so I think at the moment, six months seem to be enough. And we can discuss if we will sequentially uh, treat them later on, if we perhaps have biomarkers who shows us that the disease will come back or the pre-RA will come back. And then we can restart the treatment perhaps. And what about safety? Because we better talk about safety of a biologic because yeah. the, the reimbursements were all say, you know, what's your number needed to treat to prevent one uh, inflammation? It's about four patients to prevent the development of rheumatoid over six months. Yeah. Tell us about the safety of having a Batacet for six months. Um, safety signals were the same um what we know so far, we don't have, we do have, uh, we did have, oh, sorry, we did have three SIAs. Uh, one pulmonary infection uh, was one um, issue, um, but there was nothing pretty new on these signals. So one patient developed uh, Mama CR and one patient um, also did develop uh, afterwards uh, malignant tumor, um, but this was in the placebo group, so not in the mm, treatment group. That's very fortunate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you treated 139 odd patients or 100 patients and you got three SAEs. Yes. So, you know, the number needed to harm looks like it's about 30 odd, 25 to 30. Yeah. And the number needed to treat was four to prevent one progression yeah. using uh, MRI and symptoms. So that's quite impressive. Yeah. Now, do you believe that ACPA is a pathogenic antibody that causes RA and that if you eliminated that antibody, you might go a long way towards preventing this disease? And were you able to show any of the ACPAs disappeared in the people who didn't get rheumatoid and persisted in the people that do. So tell us about ACPA and RA outcomes. Um, coming to the last question, I don't think, that, we haven't seen any patient uh, where we could decrease to zero the ACPAs. But in our opinion, we think that there is a threshold uh, of individual base um, so that it is not for the whole group the same uh, range of ACPA levels, 
where they develop uh, RA or not. Um, so it's individually, I think. It's a, it's not the only um, pathologic uh, reason, the ACBA, but it shows that the um, normal situation in the body, the, that the body has uh, breached the, toler the, the tolerance. So the autoimmunity started, which doesn't mean that the patient really will develop RA so far. Um, because we have data that 14 years before the patient uh, patients develop RA, we could detect them the ACBAs in the blood. But there are different AMPAs, and who can add a portion of risk to get uh, RA, perhaps. So it's a summary of different things um, that increases the risk yeah, it's, for, it's uh, like you need a second hit act by itself may not absolutely. be enough no no but i i yeah I, I think it is i think it is a pathogenic antibody and i think we should rename rheumatoid aqua positive arthritis and separate the zero negatives off to an, a whole other yes. ball game yeah. and what about what about a take home message for the clinician from your study um, I think the clinician or the general practitioner should ask the patients always if they had unspecific pain for a longer time, then it would be good to test for uh, ACBAS and then to refer those patients to a center who is familiar with such patients to pick them up as early as I possible see. to have a, the, to can that we are able to use the windows of opportunity to treat these patients pretty early. And given failed studies with methotrexate, with hydroxychloroquine, yeah. with other drugs, do you believe, although the Dutch did show some benefit from methotrexate, do you believe we're doing a disservice not going to a potent biologic from day one in early disease and having to use conventional agents, two of them in our country for six months. And that's all driven by cost and history rather than um, what's the best agent from day one. Do you think when these things become biosimilar and cheap, the treatment algorithm might be tipped on its head? Um, there's still a place for MTX in the treatment of overt rheumatoid arthritis, for sure. But in the situation where we might think about preventing or delaying the disease, it definitely will help us if we um, will use biologicals or target synthetic DMARTs in those patients as early as possible. And the costs are always the point um, when we calculate just the costs about the drug, but we didn't calculate um, the costs if we prevent the disease and all the disability of those patients and life and improve the life quality with that. Because in my opinion, life quality cannot be uh, calculated by costs. It's just an individual situation. And I think every RA patient would give as much as possible on money if he wouldn't suffer from RA. Um, and, then, and sorry, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So it reminds me of Paul Emery's studies from years ago with the Betacept in very early RA, the AVERT study, for example. So I think um, we're revisiting yeah. this um, this option, and I think you should be congratulated for coordinating and doing such a nice study. The Epipra study and your study go hand in hand, yeah. um, and. Is there any other uh, comments you want to make about your study and your results for the or the clinician to take home? Um, I think we do. We are in the situation right now that we have the treat earlier trial, uh, which was published one year before. So the discussion if we should use um, conventional DMART um, wouldn't be the case. We have seen with Apipra 
and the ARIA study that it is possible to treat the patients in this early stage without having any major side effects on them. And we were successful to reduce the inflammation and to delay the disease. So we should look carefully on the next steps, what we should do, what we should compare together to improve even the, those results, I think. And so for that, it is important and that general practitioner will send us the patients. Will you MRI these patients? Should yes. that be done on everyone with early disease? <laughs> As a university center, yes, of course. <laughs> we want to make our radiologists happy. Um, now, I think we need <laughs> we need um, a di diagnostic procedure which can be seen on every other place on the world and can um, look on the results, which is much easier than ultrasound can be done. But we also should look on other diagnostic procedures which can, can be of help and give us new information about pain, about fatigue, which is also present in those patients in this early stage. I would love to, you to be able to work out the positive predictive value of the MRI change yeah. to teach us which MRI changes are very important yeah. and which aren't. And how many of these patients that had disease on MRI went disappeared their arthritis without treatment <laughs> would be very interesting to know. Absolutely. What is what are you planning for your next group of studies? Um, I think check inhibitors are quite interesting. I know that some colleagues are already doing that as well. Um, also, uh, we started a trial, so these results will be pretty interesting if that can be comparable to the APIPRA and the ARIA study. And we should look on new diagnostic procedures, new um, scores for measuring activity on the pre-RA patients. We should include such things like fatigue um, and so on, and the MRI scores perhaps to get a new score to calculate the activity or the response or the remission rate in the, those patients as well. And do you think in PSA there's a big gender difference based on disease activity in response to treatment? Did you see any major gender difference? Not in the ARIA trial so far. And what about the effect of smoking? Um, sure, this is always um, discussed by many colleagues that this reflects clearly a risk factor, and this can add to ACPA positivity, and this can add to the development of uh, the clinical disease as well. So surely we should ask the patients for stop smoking, but it doesn't work that well. But it is clearly a risk factor. <laughs> And not easy to do. You did mention biomarkers. Is there anything that's coming out from your study to help us as a biomarker for progression and non-progression? Um, going back to another study, the retro study, we did a reduction study on our A patients, and we have seen that the double positivity of rheumatoid factor and ACBA reflects the patients who will have the biggest chance to get a flare after reduction of treatment or even stopping. So this is now reflected also in the ARIA study that those patients with more than one antibody will have more risk to develop the disease. So we should go in more detail on these things um, to pick the best patients for clinical trials out with the uh, with much more than one ACPA or AMPA positivity, and maybe they get we, we are we were able to improve the results having the really risk patients there, and we will look on that. Um, it's the problem is that we didn't have to collect it all the needed serum. Um, for the whole study because these were small hospitals, for instance, and they were not yeah. focused on sampling. 
Um, this is a problem. I think Andy did a better job on that. He get more results on that. Uh, so we will be happy to add something to this program. Um, but it's quite interesting for the future. And we should do for the next study, definitely better sampling and go in more detail on that. And finally, the six months of treatment yes. and prevention, how long do you think that treatment benefit lasts in most of those people? Um, I know so far that most of the patients who were treated with abatacept uh, in the mean do have a response until 24 months so far. This is what I know, but it was not uh, stati statistically proved right now. But this is, uh, I just called the patients and asked them. Okay, so we congratulate you on your study published in The Lancet this year in March. We thank you for your time again. And if you'd like to know more about this paper and others uploaded to the Immune Mediated Inflammatory Disease Forum website, you can get detailed slide sets are available in the publication section, imidforum.com. Please subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, iTunes or other podcast media and let us know what you think. You can also watch us on the IMID Forum on YouTube. And finally, you can follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook to keep up with all the new disease content coming soon in 2024. So congratulations. We uh, look forward to hearing more of your studies. And I think uh, there'll come a time when we'll have to rewrite the treatment algorithm. There is a window of opportunity that's been shown, and it's a question of the most effective and safe agent from the earliest opportunity, as you're starting to show in Apipra and this study. So thank you very much, Jürgen, for your time. Thank you very much, Peter, for this conversation. I pretty enjoyed it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.